Hello there, and welcome to the first game dev diary for My Alien Farmstead. My Alien Farmstead is an indie PC game in early development, being done by myself and my husband of Red Nebula Studios. My name's Sarah, and I wanted to share with you some of the stuff we've been working on. For this project, I'm going to be doing the artwork for it, like concept art and stuff like that, and also the programming. My husband is working on the music, and we're both going to be working on 3D modeling, sound design, and all of the various and sundry other things that go along with making a game. My Alien Farmstead is a dystopian sci-fi farming sim, so if that sounds interesting, you might want to follow along and see where we go with this thing. Subscribe to this channel for more updates, or you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook. If you're really enthusiastic about the idea, check out our Patreon, where you can support this game in progress. Right, so what do we have so far? Well, nothing particularly pretty. A lot of early game design is a lot of boxes, and just kind of putting things together, doing a lot of back-end programming, seeing what works, what doesn't work, and all of that. So let's take a look at some of the underlying stuff that I've got taken care of for this game already. And please note that any graphics and stuff that you see at this point are kind of obviously placeholders. Since this is going to be a grid-based game, the first and most important thing that I put together was the grid. So you have the ability to put down a piece, it follows along with where the grid is laid out. And you click you place an item. And for things like ground, and later on when you're placing things like soil for fields and stuff like that, it'd be very nice to be able to place a whole bunch at once. So there is the ability to click and drag and place. And you notice how your placement piece turns red when you go over ground that's already been placed. If you click, you get a little contextual message saying why you can't place something there. There's also an out-of-bounds message over here. The other types of ground are like soil, and then there will be other things like different path types and such. When you go to place them, you can't just place them over on wild land. You have to place them on top of dirt that's already been flattened. I've got a couple of different soil types represented just by different colors at this point. so you can place them like so. The other type of object you can place right now are structures. In this case, we'll place down some worker housing. As you can see, this piece is much bigger than the grid size, so the grid does have the ability to deal with items that are much larger than just a single grid. You can place buildings on top of any type of dirt or other ground structures, but you can't, once again, place it on wild land. And it will give you an error if even just one part of the building is where it shouldn't be. So go ahead and place it down. Same thing as it turns red when there's, when there's no placement options available. Right now you can't place it anywhere because there's not enough flattened ground, and if you try to place it here it says, I'm too close to another structure, can't do that. And eventually what you'll be able to do with worker housing is click on it and hire workers, or rather clone them again, this is a sci-fi game. But for the moment I've just got a spawner that responds to a key press on the keyboard, so let's see our little farmer. There they are. And for right now, all they're going to do is just path back and forth between a couple of waypoints that I've set up. But it just gives an interesting idea for how they're going to move around. They don't have any animations just yet, but you can see how the movement will work. And something else to notice is they are, in fact, pathing around where the soil is. Now this isn't because they don't want to walk on soil full stop, it's just that they have less desire to walk on soil than they do just walking on normal dirt. And then when there are things like paved paths in the game, they will also show a preference for walking along those paths. And if I turn on the gizmos so you can have a look at what's going on, we're using the A-Star Pathfinding Project by Aaron Granberg, I think is how his name is pronounced. 
got this great grid-based system as one of the options of how you can put together the navigation for moving agents like our farmer here. The areas with the red blocks are completely unwalkable, so when the housing is put down, it actually adds that. The farmer is avoiding walking on the soil here, but if given no other choice, they will in fact walk on soil. Like so. However, the next time that they figure out a path that they want to go on, they'll try to find one that avoids the soil if they can. A lot of how you're going to be interacting with the game has to do with camera movements, and we have the ability to move via WASD using Q to go down and E to go up, and there's also bounds that say you can't go down further than a certain level, like I don't want you to be able to go down through the ground. There's a limit to how high you can go, and you're also bounded by the ends of the scene, although that's a, that's a little bit harder to see, but I'm trying to go backwards right now and I'm kind of stuck against the wall. Most of your play is going to take place over here. You don't really need to be able to go too far afield, and there will be mountains or ocean or indicators of some kind that, yeah, this is the end of the playing area. The moving around like this is controlled by holding down the right mouse button and pivoting around. And there's also a bit of a speed boost if you press the shift key as you move. All of this is set up with the idea in mind that there will be options on the menu to be able to remap these keys if you so desire. And the last thing I wanted to show for the moment was one of the things I wanted to get right as early in the process as I possibly could because it's super important for everything else, and that is the save system. Keep an eye on our little farmer friend here. I'll wait until they're about here and hit escape to pause. And as you can see, I've got a save button and a load button. Quit and resume. If we save here, okay, saved. Let's quit. Got a very rudimentary main menu here. Options and credits are just placeholders at the moment, but what does work is the load game. And this gives you whatever the most recent game was that you saved uh, up top first, and then any other games that you might have. There are as many save slots as you really want to have available. And I'll say, this is the last one that we were playing. That was the only save file that I created for this one, so that's why the created and last played are the same. If we click this to load, it takes a second, and as you can see, the farmer was exactly where he started before and moved away from that spot to his next destination. Everything is where it is, and it all works very nicely. So that was something I really wanted to get right. Obviously, there's a lot of things in a game like this that have to be saved between gameplay sessions, and it's intended to be a game that would be played over a number of different sessions, so it makes sense to have a very robust save system in place. And that's it for the moment. Again, as I said, this is very early development, but I wanted to capture the state of the game at this stage so that we could see how it was developing as time goes on. I hope you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes look at my alien farmstead. Once again, if you'd like to know more, please feel free to subscribe to this channel or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. That's all for now. See you in the next dev video, and bye!